Hello and welcome to Breakfast for Pancakes. I'm your host, PK Sullivan. Today, I'm going to show you how to make an awesome cheesecake. This is a great recipe to keep in your repertoire. Creamy, delicious, fantastic cheesecake. It becomes a real crowd pleaser and it's super simple. You can even make it up to a few days in advance. So if you're having a party or just guests over, this is a great one to be able to pull out of the fridge and serve for dessert. No muss, no fuss, and always makes people happy. This is a super creamy cheesecake, not a light and fluffy one, luscious and delicious. I'm going to show you how to do this in two different presentations. The first is going to be your picture perfect Instagrammable cheesecake with the graham cracker crust and everything. The second is just going to be individual single serving mason jar cheesecake. That's a great way to prepare your cheesecake when you're having a lot of people over set up a cheesecake sundae bar, an ice cream sundae bar, but with cheesecake. Who doesn't love that? Get yourself a bunch of different toppings. People can grab their single serving cheesecake, go down the bar, fill up with some graham cracker crumbles, some shaved chocolate, maybe some macerated strawberries or a blueberry compote. Sky's the limit. Let's get to it. Graham cracker crust. 185 grams of graham crackers. 75 grams of granulated sugar. One gram of salt. 90 mils of butter. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Process the graham crackers, sugar, and salt in a food processor until you are left with fine crumbs. Melt the butter on the stove top, then turn the food processor back on and slowly pour the butter in. Process until the mixture resembles wet sand. For your whole cheesecakes, start by lining the bottoms of your springform pans with tin foil. This makes getting the cheesecake off the pan so much easier. Press the foil onto the pan as tightly as you can, then connect the spring form over the foil. Tuck the flaps in and you're good to go. Time to make some crusts. I start with 30 grams of the mixture as the base. Tamp that down with whatever tool you have on hand or can make. I'm using a measuring cup because it has a flat bottom and is circular. An espresso tamper would work great here, but I don't have one. I don't even drink coffee, let alone make espresso at home. Be sure to really compress the crust as much as you can so it will hold together while cooking. Once your base is fully compressed, add more crust mix to the pan and press it along the sides. This can be tricky. The crust wanted to stick to my makeshift tamper. Just keep at it and find a process that works for you. With your springform crust assembled, add the remaining crust mixture to a pan and tamp down again. We're going to turn this into crumbles for our single serving cheesecake pots. With everything set, chuck them in the oven for 12 to 20 minutes until set. The graham cracker will be very fragrant, but if you smell burning, it's best to start over. You can't get rid of a burnt smell, no matter how much you try. Once these are out of the oven, they need to cool. You can't use the springform pans until they are completely cool, so transfer those to the fridge to speed the process up. Cheesecake batter. 130 grams of sour cream. 130 grams of eggs, about three whole. 100 grams granulated sugar. Three grams kosher salt. 5 grams vanilla extract, 900 grams cream cheese, cubed and softened. Add the sour cream, eggs, sugar, salt, and vanilla extract to a blender or food processor. Begin blending and drop in pieces of cream cheese one at a time. Once all the cream cheese has been added, scrape down the sides and blend again. You want the batter to be completely smooth with no lumps. Put the batter in the fridge to cool before assembling your cheesecakes. For the springform cheesecakes, Add 120 grams of batter to each tin. Now here's the trick to being able to cook these sous vide. You need to vacuum pack the entire springform pan. Problem is, the pressure will collapse the top and ruin the appearance of your cheesecake. The solution is to put a plate on top of the pan inside the bag. From there, it's the same vacuum packing process as any other food. Simply stick the open end of the bag into the vacuum changer and let it rip. I only have four inch springform pans, but you could probably scale this up to a six or eight inch pan. Just be sure to cover it with a large enough plate. Time to get the cheesecakes into the bat. You need to be very careful that you don't tip your cheesecakes or the batter will run all around and they won't turn out pretty. I'm using the double gloved barbecue trick to keep my hands safe as I lower the cheesecakes into the hot water. These cheesecakes will want to float due to the large volume of vacuum in the bag. Get some weights to hold them down. As usual, chef's presses are my go-to. Link in the description. Set your sous vide to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Let these cook for 60 to 90 minutes. With the big cheesecakes cooking, go ahead and prepare your single serve pots. Just pour batter into each one, leaving half an inch of headspace. Then add your lid and band. My sous vide setup isn't big enough to cook all of these at once, 
so my jars went in the fridge and I swapped them out once the big cheesecakes were done. These don't float, but they may want to wander around the bath due to the circulating water. I didn't want them blocking the water circulation, so they got weighted down just to hold them in place. With those in the bath, go ahead and open the bags on your springform pants. Transfer them to a tray and stick them in the fridge to cool. No one likes a hot cheesecake. About an hour later, grab the jars from the bath, put them on a tray, and stick those in the fridge too. While the cheesecakes chill, it's a good time to get your toppings ready. Since it's winter, I'm just going to shave some chocolate for the tops of mine. It's simple and classic. But go wild with yours. Cheesecakes can take a huge number of toppings, and if you can lean into your seasonal ingredients, so much the better. I love macerated strawberries, but it's December, so I'm not going to do that. The big cheesecakes need to come out of the pans. Open the latch and run a knife around the edges to separate the crust from the pan. Once it's free, lift the spring form away. I'm not sure why I added the chocolate before I got the cheesecake off the foil, but it worked. You do you. Speaking of, to remove the cheesecake from the base and foil, unfold those flaps along the bottom and gently use the foil to lift the cheesecake off the base. Once it's off, carefully peel the foil off the crust. You don't want to leave foil bits behind for someone to eat. Yuck. Slice your cheesecake how you wish. With one this small, I find quarters are a good way to slice it. A single 4 inch cheesecake makes a nice dessert for a couple people. Could be a nice thing to make for Valentine's Day. Give your cheesecake a quick taste and marvel at how creamy it is. The sour cream gives it just a hint of tang. It's dense but not hard, sweet but not cloying. The vanilla and chocolate sing their famous flavor duet. Who doesn't love cheesecake? Let's see how the jars turned out. First step is to crumble that crust. Just get in there with a metal spatula and scrape it up into bits. Bust out the microplane grater for a fancy sprinkling of chocolate across the top, then spoon some of your graham cracker crumbles over that. Giving it a taste, it's the same, but your guests get to choose how they finish their cheesecake. Do they want chocolate? Raspberry preserves? Maybe a ginger snap instead of graham cracker crumble. Go wild! Build a cheesecake bar and give your guests a chance to play with their food. So there you go, that's how you can make cheesecake two different ways in single serving mason jars for a cheesecake buffet or as a straight up whole cheesecake crust and all. Hope you make this recipe and I will see you next time.